everybody and welcome back to another video and if you're new you're so welcome I'm Jane and my husband Mike is behind the camera we're British early retirees debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty frugal and money-saving life on a super tight budget here in Brittany in northwest France and every Friday we share something food related with you let's take a look what we're gonna have a chat about this week Frugal Food on Friday is such a big topic that I've done my very best to try and condense it into a reasonable amount of time. And it's about how do you set a food budget? And then when you've got a food budget, how do you stick to that food budget? How do you make a meal plan? And then how do you stick to that meal plan? How do you know what to buy for that meal plan? And how do you have the self-discipline to not go over budget and not wander off your meal plan? So let's get going and think about all the different ways that we can approach this topic. Let's start off by talking about how you would go about setting your food budget. Um, that really does depend, doesn't it? I mean, what country you live in. It depends on what's available in the country you live in. The supermarkets that are available. Are there the discount supermarkets available where you live? Do they have the type of stores that we have here in France, for example, that sell discounted food on a short date? They definitely have them in the UK. They have big stores that sell overstock products. Do you have apps available to you, like Too Good To Go? Do you have local markets? Can you bulk buy? Can you go to a butcher's, for example, and say, if I buy 20 pounds, 20 kilos of beef, will you give me a discount? Depends on your family size. Of course, it depends on your family's budget, your income, your housing costs, and of course, your personal choices. regularly share with you our overall family budget and we will put a link to one of those videos in the description box below and in a pinned comment so you can find that. But let's talk about our food budget here, how we set and stick to our food budget. We have 400 euros per month for the supermarket. Now for us, that's all food, all drink, all tea, all coffee, all soft drinks. That's all meals, that's all cleaning products, toiletries, everything. So in my 400 euros a month, we always put aside 10% for long-term pantry items. That's 40 euros a month. And these, thankfully, are all the cheap items, aren't they? Things like rice, flour, pasta, Oil isn't cheap, but you know, that is something that we would buy and put away once a month. Things like, we would stock up on things like tinned fish or a tin of corned beef or a tin of uh, white beans or kidney beans or baked beans. We might put a tin of peaches away each month, a tin of pineapple away each month. I also put away things like dried beans, like black beans. I put away things like lentils, mung beans, tea, coffee each month. But I don't need to buy those every single month. So the next month I might put away some blue rolls, some bin bags, some plastic bags, some baking paper, some foil, some cleaning products. A large box of laundry detergent for me costs around seven euros. That will last me two to three months. Toiletries, a large one euro bottle of shampoo will last me two months. And then in every month, I've got an extra 10 euros that's flexible for non-food items. So that's, that's how my budget goes. So I have 400 euros a month, I'm putting aside 10% each month into long-term storage. So when you look 
at what's left, which is 350 euros, and I'm going to divide that by 30 days. That gives us 11 euros 66 a day to spend on food. It's a good amount, isn't it? It's a really good amount. So for two adults, that's 5 euros 83 per day. And it's very different than walking into a store and spending 5.83 on your food for the entire day than it is having that budget for the entire month. It's very different. So, but that does break down to 83 cents for breakfast, two euros for lunch, and three euros for dinner per adult. And that's what my budget can afford. You then need to look at your budget, how many people and how many people that has to feed for your budget. And that's when you start looking at what can I afford to cook on that budget? So let's look at how I make that work as the housewife with the money in my purse, going to the shop, each week. So if I have 30 days and I divide that by four into four shops, that's 7.5 days of food budget per shop. So I work that out, 11.66 times 7.5 means each week when I go shopping for my three meals a day, I've got 87.45. There's no more money. There's no more money at the back of the drawer there's no more money at the back of my handbag. There's no more money in the bank. There's no more money coming out of the sky. That is it. So when I'm shopping in the supermarket, I am absolutely aware as a sensible adult, I cannot spend more than 87.45 on my three meals a day for 7.5 days when I'm in the supermarket. That's it. So that's how I work out how much money I have to go shopping each of the four shops that I do per month. This is the bit that I had to put a bit of thought into and I thought, well, how do we actually have breakfast for 83 cents each? And I thought to myself, well, actually, I don't eat breakfast. Most of the time, I never ever eat breakfast. I do know that my morning coffee costs 15 cents a cup for the coffee and the milk. So my breakfast is 30 cents. And I know that Mike's breakfast is his toast, his butter, his marmalade and his coffee, which comes to 90 cents. So actually, when I average out our meal costs over the week, you can see there the flexibility. If we all ate breakfast every single day, we would be pushing it. We wouldn't be able to have toast and butter and marmalade every single day. We'd have to make decisions like eat porridge, eat cereals. We'd have to do that. We have to think about what we can actually afford to eat within that budget. I mean, we don't always spend two euros on every lunch. We don't always spend three euros on every evening meal. But these are averages and, you know, the flexibility comes for those expensive evening meals when you don't eat so much for your breakfast and you don't eat so much for your lunch. Now, I know many of you watching this today will have dietary requirements within your family and you're trying to be frugal and you've got a budget that you have to stick to. And this is where you are so lucky to have so many resources literally in the palm of your hand, in your phone or your iPad or your computer. And all you have to do is go to somewhere like Google or Pinterest or YouTube or TikTok or Instagram. And in the search bar, all you have to write is gluten-free on a budget, vegan on a budget, clean eating on a budget, calorie deficit on a budget, sensory issues or texture on a budget, keto on a budget, 
low carb on a budget and you can do your own research and look for that. It will take you time and I'm not here to, to guide you or signpost you to where you can go. But I have tried each and every one of those in Google, Pinterest, YouTube, TikTok and Instagram. And within seconds, I had multitudes of options. And there are so many people out there sharing those ideas with you. And as I said, you have a multitude of options, even if you're on a budget, even if you've got a small budget. It can be quite a big task to stick to a food budget. And it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, first of all, when you're in the supermarket, you've really got to know your weekly budget and you've, you've just got to know it. I mean, I'm in the supermarket. I cannot spend more than my weekly food budget. I can't. I can't go into next week's food budget without leaving me short for the week after that. I can't go into next month's money without leaving myself short after that. I can't rob Peter to pay Paul. I have to know my weekly budget. I have to know my meal by meal budget per person. I have to write that amount on the top of my shopping list. And here's the next one. If you are one of those people who is slipping junk food or snacks into your own budget, into your shopping basket, that needs its own budget. That's not meals, is it? I mean, for example, when you're walking around the supermarket, you're not throwing in a bottle of gin, a bottle of whiskey, a bottle of tequila and thinking that's going to come off your food money, are you? If they had cigarettes on the shelf next to the lemons and the peaches, you wouldn't be sticking those in, would you? And thinking that's part of my food budget. You wouldn't be ch chucking in Coca-Cola and lemonade and thinking, well, that's part of my food budget. Those need their own food budget. The same again. If you eat junk food or snacks that needs its own basket or trolley. Now, when I'm going around the supermarket, if there are things that are separate from my budget, I put those on the little child seat bit and I put those through as a separate transaction. If I want to go and buy chocolates or sweets or a bottle of wine or something like that, that's not on my food budget that's my discretionary budget. Now I'm quite disciplined, so if I put that all through, I will get that home, I will look on there, I'll say to myself, we spent £4.45 on wine. I will take that off my food budget total, I will take that off my discretionary amount. So there we go, it's one thing that you can do, because I know some of you are saying, you're walking around the store, you're blowing your food budget, because you're putting treats and snacks and junk food into your trolley. So more again, because I know many of you in the Facebook group, you very generously shared the problems that you will have with sticking to your food budget. I mean, first of all, you've got to have a list and you've got to stick to your list. If it isn't on the list, it is not going in your shopping cart. I'm not gonna be there to hold your hand. Nobody is in control of you but you. You have a list, if it's not on the list, it's not going in. And that means you've gotta get organized with your weekly stock check and meal plan, because you're only buying what you need for that. Either, as I do, to stock up your pantry and freezer, or for your meal plan. And the next one where you are organised as well is you need to only shop once a week. If you are nipping in and out of the supermarket all of the time, that is the biggest way you are going to blow your food budget. It would blow mine. So I have to realise if I get home and I've forgotten something, I just have to find a solution, a substitution for that. If you've got kids or adults at home and they have got their junk food or their snacks, you are gonna have to portion that daily. It could be you're only having your one 30 gram bag of crisps a day, that's it. You can only have two chocolate chip cookies a day, that's it. 
You as your and your kids can have your one piece of fruit with your lunch or your one pot of yogurt with your dinner. That's it. And finally, you are a sensible adult. No one can control your impulses, your impulse shopping, but you. I'm not there. Your mum's not there. Your friend's not there. Nobody's there but you. you. Only you can do the right thing. I promise you I have to walk around the store telling myself that's not on my list. Yep, that's lovely. That's not on my list. So it's difficult to stick to a food budget. Keep working at it. You will get better at it. Get on to meal planning. The easiest way for me to meal plan is I meal plan our main meals first. Some weeks I'll come up with seven different ideas and seven different meals, but I am not Gordon Ramsay. I am not a chef. I am not full of culinary ideas. And sometimes I just want to make my life very, very simple. And these are the type of things that I do. I cook once and we eat it twice. So I will plate up four meals. I've bought the plastic microwavable covers that go over your meals. I bought them in Ikea. They are microwave safe. I put them in the fridge. The next day I just reheat. Sometimes, number two, I might cook for three. So I might cook a little bit more and I will have our two main meals and I have two small soup bowls. I put two small portions in those soup bowls and those two smaller amounts become our lunches for the next day. I often repeat menus. I might often do things again and again and again. We very, very often have things like moussaka, lasagna, cottage pie, uh, meat pies, casseroles, roasts, salads, soups. What do you like? Just repeat them over and over. It really, really doesn't matter. In a week, we'll often have something that might be a very simple meal. It might be a bread or a toast-based meal. Uh, I might make pizza. I might make uh, a burger or a sausage in a bap. I might do soup and a sandwich or a soup and cheese on toast. I might do beans on toast with a fried egg on top. It's not gonna kill you to have one meal like that once a week. And here's another one. If I have cooked once and I think, well, I've made a lot of moussaka here, we could have that tomorrow, but I don't think we will. The weather's looking good. We might go out for the day and take some sandwiches and a picnic, or we might be back late and I just want something out of the freezer. I will often cook something, a bolognese sauce, for example, to go with pasta or a veggie pasta sauce. I might cook enough for another day as well, stick some in a freezer safe container and pop it in the freezer. So at any time, I might have one or two meals in the freezer that I can just pop out if I really don't want to cook. I'm now going to share with you a typical meal plan for us. And this, this isn't something that we do every single week. It's just a typical example. So on a Sunday, I always make some kind of a roast. I'm British, it's what we love to have. It could be a chicken, it could be chicken pieces, it could be a couple of pork chops. If, and I mean if, there is a joint of meat going very, very cheaply in the supermarket, I might buy a small joint of meat and cook that. And we'll have roast potatoes with that. I might make a gluten-free stuffing to go with that. I might on a very rare occasion make Yorkshire puddings to go with that, but we will have that, roast potatoes, a pile of steamed vegetables and a meat-based gravy. And I plate up four meals and we always have that on a Monday because I never cook on a Monday. It's a busy day. But when I've written ding cuisine, it means I've reheated it in the microwave. 
Two days a week, we will always have some kind of a vegetable based meal. It might be a veggie lasagna, it might be a crossbus quiche, it might be a veggie stir fry, it might be tofu and tofu stir fry or a tofu in a curry, for example. And again, I always do that as for two days and repeat it again. In the week, we always have a very simple night. It could be a bacon sandwich with soup. It could be a baked potato with tuna, mayo and sweet corn. It could be egg chips and beans. It could be a burger in a bun with a bit of salad. It could be some kind of rice and beans one pot meal. It could be something that I have just quickly thrown in the instant pot. It could be, you know, a bit of chicken that I've split between the two of us, vegetables and potatoes and stick it in there. And it's one of those cooked really quickly meals. At the weekend, I always do something which I would call a traditional family favorite. And you can see there I've come up with like, it could be casserole and veg, it could be shepherd's pie and veg. It could be a pasta baked, pasta based meal. And we love to have things like um, pasta bakes, where I might have tuna, vegetables, pasta, stick in some tomato sauce. I might do masaka, something like that. But again, I always do that for two meals in a row. As I said, this is typical. It's not every single week. Some weeks I cook something different every single day. But I just want to show you an example of how every now and then, and I'm in that then stage of my cooking, I don't want to cook every single day. So I've just made it very, very simple for myself. I want to share with you that meal planning can be really, really simple. I, with your family, with your children, with your grown children, whoever you live with, just you and your couples, you don't need to talk to them about what they want to eat. But if they're going to be awkward and say, I don't know and I don't care, and you give them I don't know and I don't care for dinner and they don't eat it, well, they have two choices, don't they? They can shut up and eat it or they can take it or leave it. Because if they don't tell you what they like, and you're not a mind reader, I mean, obviously, if you know, no one, no one in your family will eat mushrooms, or nobody in your family likes tomatoes, then you know what to leave out if you're cooking. If it's just you and an adult living in the house, and, and they are fussing, fussing, fussing all the time about what you give them, and they won't tell you what they like, and they won't tell you what they want, I'll tell you what, Give them their half of the food budget and tell them to cook their own food. Because you are not a chef and you are not running a restaurant. Hopefully, you'll have some kind of unity in your relationship and you will be doing things like cooking together. In our house, we have a system. I do all the cooking. Mike does all the washing up. He loads the dishwasher. He cleans up all the kitchen, cleans up after me. And that's just what works for us. He doesn't like cooking. I don't like cleaning up. So that works for us. But, you know, find what works for you. It could be batch cooking. When I was working, I used to cook all our meals at the weekend, freeze them, and we just reheat them. Or I would put something in the slow cooker in the morning. But I just made it simple for myself. And it's okay. I mean, if you don't want to repeat meals, make a load of lasagna and put four of them in the freezer in little foil containers just for the two of you and take them out and eat them as when you want them. But make it simple for yourself. Do a weekly stock check and a weekly meal plan, primarily from what you've got to start with, because that will stop you from wasting things and it'll make it easy because you go, oh yeah, there's some soup in there I cooked the other day. Oh yeah, there's a lasagna in there. And you can put those into your meal plan. shared with me that you were all right with planning the main meals but what you found it difficult with was planning three meals a day. Now I don't know about you but we don't fuss over breakfast. I mean it's got to be a first world problem hasn't it? It's got to be a middle class problem if you're sitting there worrying about a menu for breakfast. Breakfast 
absolutely can be simple and the same. I mean, sometimes in the winter, we do like to eat porridge because it's because it's a, hot, a quick, hot thing for breakfast. And it's literally 30 or 40 grams of porridge in a bowl with about 100 milliliters of milk stuck in the microwave. We don't put any sugar on it. We don't put any jam on it. We don't put anything on it. We just eat it as it is. I mean, you can buy cereals on sale. You can make your own breads. You can make your own jams. You can make your own marmalade. You can buy peanut butter when it's on sale. And as I've said, if you've got any dietary needs, follow my previous advice about doing your own research for doing it on a budget. We tend to only drink real coffee in the morning. We tend to drink water with our lunch. We tend to drink water with our meals. If we get thirsty, we tend to drink water. And um, so we know our unit costs. Lunches, again, if you have any dietary needs, do your research. But I will often make protein-based wraps. I will make lentil wraps. I will put the link to that in the description box and in a pinned comment below. But I make cheap things. I make things like hummus. I make bean pâtés and dips. I make homemade coleslaw, homemade salads, rice salad, pasta salads, potato salads. Again, we've made videos on that. I will put a link to that in the description box below. I make vegetable soups in the winter and my vegetable soups pretty much have always got potatoes, lentils, beans, carrots. I buy a bag of mixed frozen vegetables for about a euro, throw that in. We make sandwiches, I make uh, homemade bread, we eat leftovers, I make quiche, crustless quiche. But know your unit prices. I know, for example, one egg cost me 25 cents. I can make batches of lunches like hummus. So I can put hummus on toast. I can buy a packet of passe for about 150. We can have a piece of toast with passe on it and a piece of fruit for our lunch. But something that is really good to do for lunches is make a batch of lunches and we'll eat pretty much the same lunch for three days and another for three days as well. And leftovers for lunch, as I've said earlier, Sometimes I will put leftovers in a small breakfast bowl, put that in the fridge, and we will just reheat that for our lunches. Something you may never ever have done is work out the unit price of what you bought. It's very easy if you pick up a packet of chicken breasts and they're 10 euros, and there's four in there, you know they're two and a half euros each. That's simple. But what about the things like coffee? Our coffee come in dossets, which look very similar to a tea bag, and it goes in our espresso coffee machine. And we put two in per large mug. So it's 273 for the whole bag. There's 48 in there. It works out approximately 0.5 per dosset. So I know per mug of coffee, 10 cents. I add milk to that. Milk is one euro per litre. I'm using 50 millimetres 50 millimeters per coffee. 100 millilitres divided by 50 millilitres is 20 coffees from one litre. So therefore it's five cents. So I know my one mug of coffee costs 15 cents. So it's a way that you can get used to writing down on your bag of coffee or on your packet of meat or on your bag of bananas, how much is all of it? And then you can work out your unit price. Sometimes with things like vegetables or meat, you will have the price for the whole lot, won't you? And then you'll know roughly half a bag of carrots, half a bag of beans, quarter of a bag of broccoli. You know that approximately. 
So if I go to the supermarket and I buy a big kilo pack of minced beef, I think you call that ground beef, I know that I will bring it home, immediately I will divide that into two packs and freeze it. I know each pack is five euros. I know each pack makes a meal for four, so the meat in that meal is 125. The more you do this, the more you will get used to thinking, my jar of jam is 150, we will get 20 portions of jam out of that, and you will then be able to work out how much each portion per person costs. Okay, let's uh, round this up by in generalizing here. We're thinking about how we're sticking to the meal plan, how we're sticking to the budget. Be realistic if you think we don't cook every day, we do eat out. Eating out has its own budget. If you are a snack eater, if you're somebody who's snacking all the time and you're wondering where your food budget is going, it will really help you if your snacks have their own budget. If that's $10 a week, that's the budget for snacks. It'll really help you if you discuss your family favourites with your family. I know, for example, Mike does not like to eat any meat at all that is on the bone. There's no good me thinking, well, I can save money because I can give them chicken thighs or chicken legs or chicken drumsticks or pork chops or something like that. Really, really doesn't like it. In fact, I would say to the point, he detests it. So I have to think about the favourites and that way that works. He would rather have half of a chicken breast than four chicken thighs. So it's what works for your family. Discuss your new budget and your dietary ideas with your families. Research them. So if you suddenly have been told by your doctor you have to go on a keto diet, as I said to you earlier, there is the world of ideas out there. I, I even found keto vegan on a budget ideas on YouTube. Stick that in there, you will find them too. If you don't want to cook every day and stick to your meal plan, batch cook. Cook once, reheat it the next day. Or cook once, put some of it in a freezer safe container, freeze it. Have super cheap days. It is absolutely okay if you can eat it to buy a frozen pizza and keep that in the freezer for the days you don't want to cook. I would do that, except I cannot find gluten-free pizzas here where I live. The other thing that's really important to stick to your meal plan, have it on the wall, put it on the freezer, have it where you can see it and check it every day. So you know you need to take maybe fish out the freezer or chicken out the freezer, that you need to peel some vegetables and leave them in a pan of water before you go to work or set your slow cooker going before you go out for the day. So there you go, some ideas of general ideas of helping you to stick to your meal plan and stick to your budget. Something else that really helps us, not only with meal planning, but sticking to our meal plan, is having our meal plan on display. Uh, when I used to write it in a book, I would forget where the book was, I forgot what I'd done with it. I've seen some really good examples of this. You can get magnetic write on wipe off boards to go on the front of your fridge. You can get boards similar to this. This one is no longer in stock, but if you go to Amazon in your country and put up menu planning board or wall planner for menu or wall planner, you'll get something just like this. And having it here, and I can see it all the time, it reminds me what I've got to do, and it's just there, it's just there. And everyone else in your family can see the tough luck that you're serving up this week that they've asked for, that they've agreed with already. You know me. I like to be reflective. I know lots of you shared with me that you would go 
over your food budget. And I thought it's very important that I share with you how we budget. And as I've said to you, there will be links in the description box below to one of our previous budgets. That at the beginning of every month, I send the money away. I put the money into the savings funds. I put the money into the sinking funds. And all that is left in our current account, in our checking account, is the absolute to the penny amount of money we need for that month. So if I went over my food budget, I wouldn't be able to put fuel in the car. My electricity supplier would turn up and expect their direct debit. I wouldn't be able to take the money because it wouldn't be there. So that's something that we do because I know, like you, that if I wasn't careful, I could go over my food budget. So I do understand those difficulties that you've all shared with me about your food budget. And as I've shared with you in the past, I have genuine food insecurities and I worry that we don't have enough food in the house. So I absolutely understand it is difficult to set a food budget. It is difficult to stick to a food budget. It's difficult to set a menu plan, especially if you've got people in the house who are not on your team who are saying, I don't know and I don't care. And when you serve them up, I don't know and I don't care, that they complain. Or you might have a partner who doesn't like to have the same things two days in a row, or you don't like to have the same things on repeat. So I absolutely understand it's, it's, it's difficult. And like budgeting, it gets easier the more you do it and meal planning and meal budgeting and food planning and all those things, I promise you, keep at it, keep working at it, you will get better at it, you will find it easier. Thank you so much to everyone for watching the video today. If you've enjoyed it, we ask you one thing and that's you hit the like button. Thank you to all the new subscribers. We've had nearly a thousand subscribers new to the channel. Welcome, it's so nice to have you here. We know half of you watching are not subscribers, so go on, hit the subscribe button. We love your comments. We read every single one of them. And we'll see you soon. Bye.